Hi guys, here's another video in the How Do I series. How do I change colours using the colour replacement tool in Affinity Photo? Well, to start with, we'll get right into it. Load in your image and duplicate the image layer in the Layers panel. The colour replacement tool is actually a destructive tool and ruins the original image layer. So if you pull in your original image and you don't want it destroyed, make a copy. To use a non-destructive approach, you need to duplicate the background layer. This will add a copy of your background layer in the Layers panel, which is the one affected when we replace colours. Now the Colour Replacement Brush tool works by replacing the colour of pixels on the current layer with the primary colour selected on the colour panel. The pixels affected by the colour replacement brush are determined by the following things. The colour of the pixel under the tool when you click on your page. Whether the pixels are within the same selection area. That's determined by selection. And the pixels are included in the painted stroke. And the tools tolerance settings. All very important settings. From the Colour Studio colour wheel, select the Colour Picker tool. Drag it over the colour you want to replace. And you can see the big circle there, that's the Colour Picker tool. And I've selected the uh, purple, I guess you'd call, or mauve petals of the flower. Note it changes the selected colour next to the picker when you let it go. And you can see that here. The colour next to the picker is the colour of the petals that I just selected. Select the body colour dot, not the stroke circle, the one on the left. Tap the colour selected by the picker to change the body colour dot. So now tapping that purpley colour will change the white dot to the same colour. That's what you want. The colour selected by the picker now appears in the body colour. Next, go to the paintbrush tool. From the pop-out menu, select Colour Replacement Brush. Next, from the Brushes panel, select a soft brush from the standard brushes. Adjust the context toolbar settings. Tap the colour selector from the colour wheel. Choose a primary colour to replace the colour you want to change. Now do this from the context toolbar. Don't get lost by going up to the colour studio and selecting colours there. You, it, it, you will get lost. Do it from the context toolbar. Here I've selected an intense blue. Now the context toolbar settings are a standard soft brush. It's 128 pixels in width. The opacity is 100%. The flow is 100%. The hardness is 25%. The tolerance is 10%. So the pixel selected, it has a tolerance for not being the colour you want of only 10%. Contiguous, um, self-evident. Now, the secondary colour in the Colour Studio has now changed to the Context Toolbar colour. So you've changed the Context Toolbar colour via the colour wheel. And if you look at it up there in the Colour Studio, you now have that right-hand um, outline colour, which was the the black circle or black donut if you like that's now solid blue color so with our layer selected and the color and other <clears throat> other options set we can carefully apply the color to the flower when you first touch the pen tip to the image it samples the color and that's the color that will be replaced how much around it is replaced is controlled by the tolerance.
don't try and recolor too much at once. It's very uh, CPU intensive. It will make your system work quite hard if you get stuck into it and trying to do the whole lot at once. The tolerance option expands or contracts the selection by making it more generic or more specific. It basically increases the tolerance of the color sample selected. You'll get better results as well by touching rather than brushing on the new color. It doesn't actually behave like a brush so much as changing the colors where you're touching. When you first touch the pen tip to the image, it samples the color and that's the color that will be replaced. Now that's worth saying again, which is why I did. This process also consumes a lot of CPU processing power. So give it time to catch up sometimes. If it appears to be lagging, don't worry. It's very busy calculating things. Now that's all there is to this. Depending on your subject choice and your patience, you can render almost any image. Have fun with this one. It has a wide variety of uses. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the thumbs up to like. Lots of interesting stuff if you're looking still can be found at Envato Elements. Click on that link down there or type it in. It's only a fairly short link. And off you'll go to Envato Elements. Lovely. Thank you for watching.